May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Only Luke is with me. At the end of his life, under house arrest in Rome and awaiting probable execution, St. Paul, in our reading from 2 Timothy, lists those who have deserted him or let him down and acknowledges others who are continuing his life's work, spreading the Christian gospel throughout the Roman Empire. But only one of his followers has apparently stayed with him in Rome, in spite of the danger. Someone called Luke, generally taken to be the gospel writer, whose feast day we celebrate today. And so what do we actually know about this Luke the church remembers? We all know of Luke as the named author of the third gospel. Many of us may also remember being taught that Luke is also thought to have written the Acts of the Apostles, the story of the earliest church which culminates with Paul's final journey to Rome. In Acts, the author often writes in the first person plural, we, suggesting that he shared in at least some of Paul's more dramatic experiences and journeys, including that last journey to plead his case before the emperor in Rome, which would corroborate the statement that Luke was with him at that point in Rome. The four writers of the different gospels all drew on shared material and eyewitness reports, and many incidents are to be found in each of the gospels, or at least more than one. And yet each of them also had their own perspective on the teachings of Jesus. And of course, the incidents or the stories which they record reflect their own preoccupations, experiences, or priorities. Luke is a beautiful and evocative writer. If I were to ask you now which bits of the New Testament you most clearly remember, I think there's a good chance many of these would come from the Gospel of Luke. Do you think for a moment what first comes to mind. Perhaps you thought of the parables of the Good Samaritan or the Prodigal Son, the nativity images of the stable, the angels and the shepherds, or the beautiful canticles, the Magnificat, Benedictus and Nunc Dimittis, all of which are found only in the pages of Luke's Gospel. But what was Luke himself like? Of course, much of what we know about this is either supposition or extrapolation from the few facts we can glean from his writing. Luke introduces both the Gospel and Acts in the form of a letter to an unknown person, apparently of rank, whom he addresses as Most Excellent Theophilus. He explains, I decided after investigating everything very carefully from the very first to write an orderly account for you so that you may know the truth. And orderliness does indeed shine through much of Luke's writing. He is keen to place the events of Jesus' life within a concrete, chronological, historical setting. Even those familiar words from the beginning of every carol service do precisely that. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Although this statement has provided biblical scholars with various headaches over the centuries, as they try to align these dates with Roman history recorded elsewhere, it does set the Christian narrative against a realistic and recognisable backdrop, and also places it in a particular political setting. The people of Palestine were firmly under Roman occupation and subject to the demands of their Roman rulers. Luke writes in Greek, and in the Greek of someone familiar with classical learning, 
It seems he expects his readers to be from Greek-speaking rather than Hebrew backgrounds, and so presumably newer converts of the kind Paul had addressed. But he's not writing for the wider Roman world, but rather for those within some kind of Christian circle. And yet he has deep respect for those who work with their hands. Farmers, fishermen, shepherds, all feature in the stories he has chosen to immortalize. And there's also his loyalty to Paul, the tent maker. Luke is concerned with the political world and the balance of power, with stark contrasts between urban and rural life, issues of social class and polarization, the powerful centralized role of the temple within Jewish religion and politics, and the coming of the end of the world. All these were live issues within first century Judea, but it's hard not to see in this list many echoes of the society we live in today. The anxieties and the concerns especially of the younger generation and the subjects of our ongoing political and economic debates. Perhaps it's this timeless aspect of many of Luke's concerns which keeps his gospel fresh and poignant for modern readers and his stories and powerful songs so memorable. As our gospel reading showed us, Luke was also committed to the task of mission and of creating new disciples. Perhaps those travels with Paul had shown him the power of the personal sharing of one's faith in Christ, as Paul created and built up Christian churches in so many of the cities of Asia Minor. As he recounts the stories of Jesus, he also includes Jesus' instructions to the disciples to do precisely what Paul himself did later, go out like laborers into a potentially rich harvest, spreading the gospel of Christ, reflecting God's love and healing power and reminding them of the coming of his kingdom. They were to be single-minded, faithful and committed, not being distracted on the way to their destinations and perhaps this too reflects something of Luke's admiration for Paul, as well as for Jesus himself. I wonder if this single-mindedness also helped Luke himself to remain with Paul in spite of all the risks it must have entailed. Luke sheds light on Jesus' care and concern for the suffering, the downtrodden, and all who are victims of prejudice and hostility. But he also encourages us. The harvest is as plentiful as ever. We too can see around us, especially in present circumstances, people in need of comfort and peace and justice. People for whom the message of God's love and Christ's redemption could bring hope and reassurance. Luke's transmission of Jesus' words is clear. Go out, taking nothing with you for yourself, but bringing peace and healing to all whom you meet, and telling them of the joy which can be experienced in following Christ. Amen.